Hi everyone, I got this gamepad to go with my M1 iPad Pro 11 inch for casual gaming. I'm going to show you how it's like pairing it, how it performs with three different types of games, overhead view, platforming, and simulation racing. You'll see me test the rumble vibration feature, test both thumbsticks, D-pad, all apps buttons, and shoulder buttons, all to maneuver in-game characters, perform meticulous tasks, solve puzzles, and so forth. Also making sure it can navigate through a game menu properly with the button it has. I'll test whether it can be used wired. I'll show you how to find games that have controller support and how to connect to and disconnect it from an iPad. Let's begin with a quick look unboxing. You can look at the details by pausing the video. I'm only going to focus on using the gamepad with the iPad Pro. It's an Amazon's choice, and in the description it says the one controller to rule them all. On the box or in the instruction paper, it says nothing about the iOS or iPadOS, but it works perfectly. A retro design, it reminds me of the Super Nintendo controller without the thumbsticks. I am basically an ex-gamer. I used to play platform games like the Revenge of the Shinobi in the days. Now I'm just a casual gamer, interested in watching others play, like modern games, but not into buying them. Now that I got an iPad Pro for work, I'd like to touch base with some kind of gaming again. The materials don't feel cheap. The buttons feel like the original Super Nintendo controller. The thumbsticks feel good, smooth, with good amount of tension. This is a pairing button. From what I know, it's for when there's problem with the connection. Keep that in mind if you have one. The shoulder buttons are needed for modern functionality and quite satisfying to press. They feel pretty good. The Apsi buttons are not mushy. Two are concave and two are convex. The D-pad is a bit sticky. Now again, you can look at the details on this paper by pausing the video. You'll see that I don't need it when I pair the gamepad with the iPad. But there are details like charging status if you want to look at. It comes with a USB-C charging cable. I'll plug it in while playing if possible. Now pairing. Easy. Go to Bluetooth in settings. Press start on the gamepad and select pair. That's it. It'll vibrate. You can even hear it. Note, it recognizes as a PS4 DualShock 4 wireless controller. The one green light will come on. Now let's test it with games. First, an overhead view game, The Swords of Ditto. It's a Zelda-like game, a link to the past. I can control and pan with the thumbsticks. I can continue or end a speech bubble with the B button or any of the C buttons. Access menu by pressing start button and navigate using the shoulder buttons. Select items using the D-pad. Just like how I remember it. Zelda, a link to the past. Why? For swinging the sword. When the lifeline is depleting, you can hold the R2 button to access consumable items and A or B to eat and controlling the character through solving puzzles. Knowing what control scheme to do what isn't hard. Just playing around, you'll get them. I'm just happy that this gamepad can do everything that is needed to play the games properly. Next, a platforming game, Otmar.
And of course, you need to be able to exit a cutscene or intermission screen when you want to. I think this gamepad was made for games like this, platformer or jump and run games. I love this game, so much fun. The characters' reactions are just funny. Just hearing the buttons being pressed is nostalgic. Here, have a look at my controlling. I'm still a novice at this game. If I could get through these gators, that means this controller is king. <laughs> now I have the camera focus on the gamepad here and there, just for a bit. Avoiding traps and toxic gas, I could do it all. <laughs> Avoiding fireballs coming out of a Venus flytrap looking thing, if I could. <laughs> Navigation screen I can control. Next, simulation racing game. Rush Rally 3. It's kind of hard to find games that utilize the shock motor or rumble vibration feature, but this game does. I'll talk about how to find games that have controller support later in the video. As you can see, I maxed out everything. This game may not be the best looking racing game, like say Grid Autosport or Asphalt 9, but it has rumble feature and it's way, way fun. Using the right thumbstick to get side view and rear view mirror perspectives is awesome. See cars trailing you is awesome. I can select any field of view I want, cockpit, hood, full, third person, or overhead view. Awesome. The thumbsticks are pretty smooth with the right tension or resistance to control the car. Not too loose, not too tight. Could you hear the rumble? Vibration? Turning off the sounds. The rumble feedback happens when I drive off the road, on the gravel, over bumps, ramps into cars or something. The shock motor isn't really strong or anything, but good enough.
red light means charging. Unfortunately, charging while playing won't work. Searching for games that support a controller isn't straightforward. The App Store groups certain games together, but not all. You'll have to dig into it yourself to find those games. When you don't see a controller icon, it doesn't always mean that the game doesn't support it. You'll have to read the description to be sure. Digging into it is a sure. You may find it, you may not. <laughs> Here's one. Dang it. You may find MFI. That stands for Made for Eye Devices. When you're done gaming, you can leave the gamepad alone or you can disconnect it manually. Flashing three green lights means it's disconnected and it will go off eventually. Again, thank you for watching. Do come back.